Our next guest runs Berkshire subsidiary BNSF. It is the largest of six major rail systems across North America. BNSF CEO Katie Farmer joins us right now. And Katie, good morning. Good morning, Becky. Um, let, let's talk the economy broadly because rail car load, loadings are a great indicator of what's happening in the economy. What are you seeing right now? You know, Becky, it's really a mixed bag. Um, we divide our business into three segments. Our consumer product segment, which is really international, intermodal, domestic, intermodal, and automotive, the consumer's really hanging in there. Um, we, we saw a drawdown in inventory following the, the pandemic, and uh, that impacted our loadings last year. This year, the loadings have picked up um, and rebuilt that inventory, and so international intermodal has been fairly strong for us. Domestic intermodal, a little bit more challenged because of the excess truck capacity that exists in the market. And then automotive inventory rebuild as well. If you turn to our industrial segment, uh, that's uh, a mixed bag as well. Um, it's, you know, chemicals and plastics, things like that are up significantly. Anything related to home building, lumber, is down, challenged because of the higher interest rates. And that's also the segment that we put coal in as well. And um, coal obviously was in structural decline, but with the low natural gas prices, as well as the really oversupply of natural gas in the market, that those volumes have been challenged for us. And then finally, in our agricultural products segment, um, you know, we had a really strong uh, first quarter relative to volumes. We saw about 60% 60 60 more grain that we loaded to the Pacific Northwest. We also see an emerging market there in renewable diesel, uh, which is a great market for us because we get to handle the raw products inbound and then the finished products outbound. So it's really a, a mixed, mixed segments, really. Warren Buffett wrote in the annual shareholders letter about how operating profit was down and that was a disappointment. Um, what, what happened? Well, you know, 2023 was definitely a challenging year and our performance reflects those challenges. We know that we need to, uh, for our, our, our customers, we need to be um, more, we need to work on our cost structure and um, our business. Meaning lower prices? Um, no, what it means is that we need to be efficient and productive. Uh, we know that we need to offer industry-leading service. We need to get everything we can out of our assets, and we need to get value for what it is that we do. Our business very closely tracks the industrial and consumer economies, and um, so we need to evolve and we need to adjust, and we know we need to do more relative to costs. How, how do you do that? Because uh, Warren also pointed out that uh, your profit margins relative to the five major other North American railroads have fallen since Berkshire Hathaway bought the company uh, back in 2010. So over the last 14 years, what specifically can you do to change that? Well, our, our business is really in a transitional period. We're seeing our portfolio move to be much greater percentage of that portfolio in intermodal. And as you know, the, there's a lot of truck capacity right now, so there, there's some headwinds with that. We're also seeing the structural decline of coal. And so what we need to focus on is really um, being aggressive relative to our cost structure, um, making sure that we're giving our customers a competitive uh, a cost structure and good industry leading service so that they can be competitive in their markets. I would say also, Becky, that during 2023, we work to extend contracts with our customers, uh, brought new volume onto the railroad, and we start the first quarter of 2024 with increased volumes and a record market share in, in intermodal. Um, it is a capital intensive business. I think you're planning to spend something like $4 billion. What's that going to go toward? A large percentage of that $4 billion capital goes to maintaining our infrastructure. As you know, uh, we maintain our own infrastructure and we have to do that because we have to give customers a reliable service product. We have to maintain an infrastructure that's safe for our customers, but we're also investing in expansion as well. One of the, the projects that we're excited about is the Barstow International Gateway in California. We affectionately refer to it as big, um, and it's going to be uh, a, an intermodal hub with adjacent land where our customers can co-locate adjacent to that hub. You know, back during the supply chain challenges, you saw a lot of the vessels that were queuing up at the ports of LA and Long Beach. This is, this is an opportunity for us to improve the efficiency and the pro productivity of the supply chain through the ports of LA and Long Beach by taking that freight moving it through the Alameda corridor into that new facility in Barstow, which really gives us the opportunity to offer customers, um, you know, a sustainable solution, uh, you know, a really competitive option where we can offer new services to uh, the interior of the country.
California is not always an easy place to do business, though. There is uh, some regulatory. The California Air Resources Board finalized what they are calling their in-use locomotive regulation. It's calling for zero emission locomotives by the year 2030. Is that even possible? Trains run on diesel. Yeah, it's a real challenge for us right now because there's no viable technology right now. And certainly within the time frame that the California Air Resource Board is proposing, we'll, we'll, there will not be zero or near zero emissions locomotives. The challenge with this regulation is that if, it, it's, if CARB uh, is granted the waiver by the EPA, we believe, Becky, that the, the fund that we would have to pay into would cost BNSF about $800 million a year. So not only is the technology not there, but the cost that the American consumer would, would bear because of this would be um, really devastating to the economy. I mean, and would that make it even less competitive with, with trucking? And, you know, that's the really unfortunate part about all of this is, is, is that rail handles 40 percent of the long haul, in, uh, long haul in this country. And we really only account for about half a percent of the greenhouse gas. So the unintended consequence of, of this is there'd probably be more traffic moving by truck over the road. And so... Um, you know, we have a, we have grave concerns with this, and the concern is if the EPA allows us to go forward, my concern is that there'll be 17 or 18 more states that will adopt this, which would significantly impact the American consumer. I mean, does that make it almost impossible for you to do business competitively at that point? Well, I have to tell you that if, if, if this does go into effect, we would seriously have to look at our investment in our Barstow International Gateway project.